This demonstration will be the uh, elbow, posterior elbow splint. In the cases, any elbow, any elbow injuries, okay, supraconular fractures, things like that, but any elbow injury, this splint will be fine. Now, how, what, what size do we need? Again, the ace bands will be very helpful. I know tape measures are really good, but you, tend more, you spend more time looking for those. And ace bands you have it, it already. So how we can use the ace bandage is take it and place it right in the middle of the elbow. If you see a quarter to a half inch of both sides, four is fine. If not, then you size up. If you see uh, too much, like an inch on both sides, then you size down. But four will be fine for this arm. My length would be three fingers distal from the, uh, the axilla and right up to the fifth MCP joint. You want to support that wrist. Don't, don't start up here. You want to support that wrist right to the MCP. This is my measurement. Open this up. Pull it out. Right from the end of the fold. Even though you pushed it back in, this is where you last cut it, remember. So that should be the end of the product. And again, try to cut it up as close to the box as possible. That's less you have to push back in. Push it in, into the box. Keep your fingers there. So when you bring the, when you bring the door down, your fingers feel it. That way the product's behind the door, you know that. Make sure this red line is gone when you seal it. Nicely sealed. Now coming over here now. Now on these edges, protect the patient again from the fiberglass, very important. Stretch the padding, stretch once, turn, and stretch. And again, as an option, you can open this up. Remember the double face tape. Open if you want, and just cut that off with your scissors. But we find this is enough stretch here. You protect it. Press it back on your patient. Now right here at the elbow, make a little pinch. Make that pinch. Now you can mark this with a pen or just pinch it with your finger here. Now remembering the double phase tape, what I'm going to do now is open this up. This is a different technique, un unlike the conventional, we just have those dog ears. I'm going to fold back my fiberglass, this side here to the center seam, and this side here back into the center seam, just at the elbow. Okay, and now I'm going to wet this while it's exposed. Close my padding back down. Okay, and now I'm just going to wet this. A little bit of zigzag on the four inch. Okay, still just the one side. Fold my splint once and twice. Squeeze that water through. And now remove the excess with your towel. This is very important as well. You don't want to go on really wet. That just enhances more chance for uh, skin maceration. Now, sometimes this may spread apart with all that movement. So just open it up and make sure it goes back to the center seam again. Okay, now you have a nice hourglass shape. And because you fold it this way, make sure this side goes to the patient, the smooth side. Okay, here you have that ridge. You want the smooth side to the patient. And now remembering to pad any bony prominence loosely three, four times. Come through the hand just one time. And just placing it back on the patient. Make sure that hourglass goes right at the middle of the elbow. Okay, don't worry about this being up here. Okay, a lot of people get concerned with that. Just do the hand first. Now I'm going to use a two inch on her hand. Okay, just come around once through the web space. And now towards the elbow. 50 50 coverage. Okay. 
Now come down, bring this up now. Now I capture that on the back with my bandage. Just to hold it up there. And then I'll take my larger bandage. Now you notice here, this is only padding. Okay, no fiberglass at all. Nicely rounded around the elbow. Also gives me 14 layers at the stress point. Okay. Nothing digging into the patient. And just close it down. Palm your hand, smooth it out. Palm your hand. MCPs are free, the thumb is free. 14 layers at the stress point. Now what tends to happen with posterior elbows, as soon as you put them in a sling, what do they do? They, tend, they think they support it, so they relax and they fall to 45 degrees. So to prevent that from happening, place the patient across, arm across the patient's chest and just take some tape. So if you take some tape and just place it right at the patient's wrist of the splint, okay? The inside one goes on the outside of the splint. This goes on the inside, just a figure eight top of the splint and then what I do here I just twist it here in the middle a little turnbuckle effect and watch the patient's elbow come up above 90 so now when you put the patient into an arm sling they can relax and the patient stops at 90 and now you bring the sling to the patient not the patient to the sling <laughs>